this next video I want to talk to you guys about what to do before you run and what not to do before you run. So I want to take you guys through exactly what I did during my professional run career but I want to make sure this is really quick for you guys. I know like life is busy right and sometimes you only have an hour to get things done and you just need to bust out your run I understand that but if you can spare five minutes just five minutes to do this routine you could avoid some injuries it's gonna help warm you up it's gonna make uh, the first part of your run especially a lot more enjoyable and feel better and your muscles are just gonna be able to move in a, in the way that they're intended to move so if you have five minutes do this routine it's really quick so what I would do when I was running professionally is I have this fascial abrasion te technique tool and really like you could buy this tool I think it's like 250 bucks or something and I'm not selling these so no pressure to buy these um, you can find a knockoff on Amazon or maybe your local running store um, that's pretty much the same thing for like a lot cheaper like five bucks um, and what you're looking for when you do buy something, if you don't have something already, it's just something that looks kind of like knife-like here. You know, you can see like it's not sharp, not sharp at all, but it definitely comes to, you know, a little bit of a, a knife kind of edge to it. Um, and so what this thing does, fascial abrasion technique, so it's going to break up the fascia. Uh, in your in your legs so the fascia think of it as like the saran wrap around your muscles and sometimes we'll get little adhesions in there and that will just keep our muscle our muscle will get stuck on that and so then our muscles not um, getting full range of motion um, anyone who's ever gotten ART like I go down and see John Ball and he works on me for five minutes and all of a sudden my flexibility is like a hundred times better than it was five minutes ago it's because he's working through um, some of those fascial abrasions and muscular uh, abrasions and scar tissue and stuff like that and it's giving me that full range of motion back so it's a really good idea use this just real quick and uh, you're gonna want like some kind of lotion or Vaseline because especially if you're a guy this is gonna pull pull your hair right out um, so I would just go like in here like I'm just gonna show you on my calf exactly what I do I'd get in here on the inside go towards the middle go towards the side and literally I'd spend 45 seconds, not even 45 seconds, probably like 30 seconds on each muscle group. On my calf, and then go to my quad and the hamstrings, and go to my other side, do the same thing. So I'd run through kind of the major muscle groups with this guy. You could also use a foam roller if you want. Um, I, I think this is better than a foam roller, but foam roller would be better than nothing. Um, in terms of getting into your glutes, um, if you want to get into those a little bit before you run, uh, getting a uh, uh, softball or a lacrosse ball is also a really good tool I'm just putting it right you know in your glutes and just doing some rolling on it and kind of get on those areas and there'll be a future video about self massage we'll get into this stuff a little bit deeper but um, you can get into your glutes with the softball if you'd like to do that so after you kind of just run through everything super quick then I'm gonna show you guys now my dynamic flexibility routine so I'd start out standing, and I'd start with some leg swings. So I'm just going to come right over here, and essentially I'm trying to reach this toe as high this way as I can, and then trying to bring it up this way as high as I can. I'm trying to keep my hips pointing forward. And so I am not very flexible, by the way, so I'm not going to be a great person to demo this stuff, but essentially what's looking forward is this. And you might find that you get some adjustments in your upper hamstring. Uh, you might get some pops in there, which will feel really good and kind of open up your upper hamstring. So do uh, 15 swings on each side. So right leg 15 times, left leg 15 times. And then we're gonna go straight forward and this is gonna really open up your core, your abdomen area, and uh, your hip flexors as well. So grab onto something and then opposite arm to opposite toe. So I'm here, I'm staying tall and going as far this way as I can with my toe and as far back as I can without unhipping, unhinging my hips. So I'm not doing this. My hips are staying locked in and it's just here. And again, you might feel an adjustment. It should really open up your, your upper hamstrings a lot. Um, let's see, and then after that, we're gonna get down on a mat here. And this one is one of my favorite ones to do, especially in the morning time. 
Because I don't know about you guys, my back sometimes just gets a little tight, not feeling great. And this, I'll get a self-adjustment out of it, so it can save you a trip to the chiropractor. So on this one, you're gonna to wanna to put your hands down on the ground, your shoulders as close to the ground as you can. You're gonna bring the opposite leg up and kind of try and touch the, like, it, like I said, I'm not very flexible, but you're trying to touch your uh, finger if you can. I can't get there right now. And trying to keep your shoulders as close to the ground as you can. So again, like 15 times on each side, and then you're gonna flip over you can do the same thing on, the, on your stomach. I actually just felt, felt my hips adjust. So what you're going to notice with these, it's really going to open up your hips. Which hips for runners like oftentimes get very, very tight. So this is a great thing to do before we run. So you're going to do that. And then you're going to come in here. And this is kind of like another way, just kind of like loosen up the hips. I'm just... Uh, putting this knee down towards the ground and oftentimes I'll get an adjustment in my hips when I'm doing that um, and then I do some towel pulls as well not towel pulls um. <laughs> rope pulls I don't have a rope Why did I, sign up? I did do rope pulls though so anyways you're going to take your rope you're going to lay back down I'm gonna use my quad to pull my leg up as high as I can. And then essentially I'm just assisting the stretch, trying to get like an extra three or four inches out of the stretch. So come up in here. You're gonna do about four times. Four times straight up, four times to this side. You're gonna feel it stretch on your IT band over your hip over here when you do it to the side, which is really important to get the IT band stretched out. A lot of runners have problems with those. And then you're gonna go to the outside. And you're gonna feel this obviously more in your groin. So see, I'm not like yanking on the rope super hard, just a little bit of extra assistance. So you're gonna do both legs um, on all angles. And then we're gonna end with uh, scissors. So this is also a good one that I'll get self-adjustment out of. You're gonna come up, hold your hips with your hands, legs straight up. And then you're gonna, I just felt, I don't know if you could hear that, but just popped in my hips. So it's just gonna get that groin nice and open. So you're gonna do about 15 to the side like this, and then 15 straight up. And trying to keep the legs relatively straight, but I'm feeling like all the stretch happening in my upper hamstrings, in my hips, in my groin area. Um, so that, that's what we're going after with those. So after that, that's it. That should it really once you get the routine down, it shouldn't take more than five minutes or right around there. You finish that, lace up your running shoes. Then I want you guys to start with three minutes of walking. So uh, it's really important that we start. We don't just head right out of the car, or right, right out of our front door, and just bam, all of a sudden we're running. It needs to be a progression from from a walk, and then it needs to progress into a slow, slow jog, a little bit faster, a little bit faster. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of not warming up properly and. Uh, you can do a lot of damage to your body doing that. So really important, start with the walk, three minute walk. Um, what not to do before you run, static stretching. Not a fan of that at all before you run. Um, after you run, if you would like to do some static stretching, if that works for you, then go for it. But I'm gonna give you guys all permission slip to never do any static stretching again, if you don't want to. With that said, you know, there's some people who love static stretching. There's people who love yoga. If that's you, like, you do it. This, this is the gold standard. Try everything. Try it. If it works for you, go with it. If it's not working for you, then you know, don't waste your time doing it. So, like, for myself, I don't feel a difference from static stretching. I don't get more flexible. Um, even, like, I've had periods where I do yoga for a long period of time. And I still, like, my flexibility wouldn't get any better. So try things if they work for you go with it be confident with it but don't waste your time on stuff that you try and it just doesn't work for you so that's what i want you guys to do before and after your runs